I could do the wall over a longer period of time. I didn't need to do this. But I'd rather do it much faster. And I don't have to do it for the election. I've already done a lot of wall for the election, 2020. And the only reason we're up here talking about this is because of the election. President Trump making his emergency declaration to build a border wall earlier this morning. Let's bring in White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Um, great to have you on the daily briefing uh, on this great day on a Friday where it's nice there in Washington, D.C., and the president was able to be in the Rose Garden today, took a lot of questions from the press. Critics of his seizing on this line that I didn't need to do this um, in regards to the national emergency, and some saying that that will be the opening line of every legal complaint that goes forward. How will you deal with that? as press secretary. Uh, look, I think the biggest thing is that he shouldn't have to do this. Congress should have stepped up and done their jobs and, and done everything necessary to fully uh, and safely secure the border. The president uh, could have waited and he could have drugged this out. The bill allows for 55 new miles of wall, which is a great step forward, and it is certainly a down payment on the wall, but it doesn't finish the job. And the president is somebody who wants to complete the job, he wants to finish the job, and he wants to stop illegal immigrants and drugs and trafficking uh, from coming across the border. And he knows that you have to have a wall in order to do that. He doesn't want to drag this out over the course of the next several years. He wants to get the funding now so we can stop this national security and humanitarian crisis at the border and take care of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was remembering, of course, people have played the clip that President uh, Trump was quite critical of President Obama years ago. But I wondered if he's found that now that he's in the Oval Office, he's realized that working with Congress is kind of a pain in the rear and they might have something in common now. Uh, I, I'm sure that they can probably find a little bit of common ground in the fact that Congress can certainly be difficult to work with. Uh, but the difference between the president, between President Trump and President Obama is apples and oranges. What President Obama did in 2014 was he completely ignored the Constitution. He violated federal law by opening up the borders, by having mass amnesty, and even providing benefits to illegal immigrants. What the president is doing is actually fulfilling his constitutional duty, fulfilling the the that he took as president of the United States to protect the people of this country, to secure our country. And there's a very big difference between what the two actions these individuals have done. They're actually opposite uh, when you compare them. And so it's just totally different circumstances. What about um, the concern from some that say that this could set a terrible precedent in the future? And I thought of uh, former Senator uh, Harry Reid, who basically uh, used a nuclear option on confirmations. And that has led to President Trump being able to confirm two very conservative um, Supreme Court nominees, and there's a legacy issue there. Any concern on that point? Uh, I think the president is going to have an incredible legacy. He's had an amazing two years already, uh, historic first two years in office. And I think his next six years are going to be equally impactful. Um, and I think that the two Supreme Court justices are something um, that are going to be one of the biggest and best parts of the president's legacy and certainly one of the most lasting and something he should never apologize for is pushing forward. The sad part is that he had to do that. He shouldn't have to do that uh, in order to put people he is the duly elected president of the United States. 63 million Americans came out and supported him and said, I want this person, this man, to choose who the next Supreme Court justice is, who the federal uh, judges are. I want this person to be able to make decisions and impact the day-to-day -day right. life of, of, of I, I these totally, people. I, I totally get it. I was just, my, my point only was that Harry Reid had made a decision that now has come back to bite the Democrats, um, and they have to deal with that. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about this because I thought it was very interesting the way the president answered a question about um, conservatives having, I think, perhaps over-exaggerated influence on the president. This just in from Ann Coulter. This is a tweet from her just now about an hour ago. She says, this is not Paul Ryan's fault. It's not Mitch McConnell's fault. Trump ran against the GOP and won. Responsibility is 100 percent his. Do you think the media over-exaggerates the influence that somebody like Ann Coulter has on the White House? <laughs> I don't think Ann Coulter uh, has any influence over this White House or influence over much of anything, to be honest. I don't think she did uh, before the president became the president, and I don't think she does now. Uh, I, I just don't see her as being an influential voice in this country and certainly not one in this building. Does the president have a plan to deal with the difficulties that eminent domain could uh, put in front of him as this national uh, emergency goes forward, tries to build the wall? There's a lot of private citizens there, a lot of pr private property. Does he have a plan for that? 
uh, certainly he's going to continue working uh, with the Department of Justice, uh, Department of Defense, as well as White House Counsel, who will be handling those issues. Uh, we feel very comfortable about where we are. And again, we know that the president uh, certainly has the constitutional authority to make this type of declaration. And we feel very good about where we are in the process. Take a listen to what the president said. Um, of course, you were there, but I just want to play it for the viewers about uh, drugs and the death penalty. I'm sorry, I missed the last part. Our criminalist, a drug dealer, gets a thing called, how about a fine? And when I asked President Xi, I said, do you have a drug problem? No, no, no. I said, you have 1.4 billion people. What do you mean you have no drug problem? No, we don't have a drug problem. I said, why? Death penalty. <laughs> Okay, so the president just did a pretty amazing thing with the First Step Act, and that was helping a lot of people in our country be able to resolve their uh, problems with the justice system because of drug uh, penalties that they had to pay. Is the president actually going to put forward anything that would change our laws on this issue? legislation or executive action the president would take on that front. I think the point he's making is that we have to be tough. We can't allow people who bring in mass quantities of things like fentanyl who can wipe out an entire community. They picked up at the border uh, just within the last few weeks enough fentanyl that would kill 50 million I Americans. I mean, that is mm -hmm. an unbelievable uh, mm -hmm. just travesty in the mm -hmm. fact that we just those people are allowed to go free in some cases or not be able to be detained for long stretches is a time. I think that type of thing is something the president wants to look at. And okay. He certainly wants to be tough on those people. Can I do one other question? Not about the national emergency. I want to ask you about Amazon. Um, New York, that's President Trump's home state. Amazon was going to do, bring 25,000 jobs to Long Island City. They decided to pull out of that yesterday. Governor Cuomo blamed um, Governor, uh, Mayor de Blasio. Amazon blamed unnamed politicians. I mean, New York looks like it's hostile to big business coming in and, and creating jobs. Does the president have a view on this? I, look, I haven't spoken with him directly about that process. I know the president is somebody uh, who loves companies who are creating jobs, and that's certainly a good thing. He's created an environment that has made that possible, which is why we've seen such a massive influx in the number of people that have gone back to work, and we have now more jobs open for people who actually want to work than we've had in decades. Uh, so that's something certainly the president supports, but I, I'm not going to get in the middle of a uh, New York, squabble New York of uh, Democrat New York politics <laughs> right now. Um, but I, I think it'll be fun to uh, watch those folks b battle, battle it, it out. out for sure. I know. I used to try to avoid Texas politics as much as possible. <laughs> All right. Sarah yeah, Sanders, luck. thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. You bet. Thanks, Dana.